Okay, the main part of section 2.3 is the invertible matrix theorem. And um, this theorem actually ties together everything that we've done so far in the course, actually. Um, everything from chapter 1 and uh, up through chapter 2 where we are. Um, so this theorem uh, says if you have a given n by n matrix A, the following are equivalent. Okay, that means that they're either all true or all false. Okay, the first two will look like this. One, A is an invertible matrix. Um, and uh, number two, A is row equivalent to the identity matrix. So that should make sense because um, um, the way we found out if A is invertible is to do those row operations and try to um, get it in the form of the identity matrix. And if we could do that, then that means A is invertible. If we couldn't do that, then A is not invertible. Okay, another statement, A has N pivot positions. So this is actually the key to the whole theorem in my opinion. Everything here you can relate to pivot positions and that's how um, uh, I would recommend that you approach this. So um, looking ahead, uh, you need to know what this theorem says. You need to be able to um, write down parts of this theorem. Um, I don't suggest that you memorize it um, because I think that's uh, that's somewhat difficult. Um, but I don't uh, so don't memorize it unless that works for you. But the way I would suggest that you uh, remember it is to relate everything back to pivot positions because that's what we've done up to now and that should still work for you. So let's look at these next three. Okay, number four says the equation ax equals zero has only the trivial solution. Okay, so um, if it has only the trivial solution, then that means that, uh, er that there are no free variables. That means every column of A is a pivot column. And so that means since there are n columns, there's n uh, pivot columns, so n pivot positions. Okay, so that relates back to pivot positions. Uh, number five, the columns are linearly independent. How do we know that? Well, again, no free variables, so pivot position in every column are in pivot positions. And number six, uh, the transformation x to ax is one to one. And how do we know that? Well, that means we want to have a unique solution uh, to every system ax equals b, um, or at most one solution. Okay, no uh, um, multiple solutions for any right hand side so that means that we can't have any free variables so again pivot position in every column so four five and six all relate to the fact that you need a pivot position in every column these next four relate to having a pivot position in every row okay which again since it's an n by n matrix um, that would mean you have uh, n pivot positions so number seven says AX equals B has at least one solution for each B and RN. So if that's true, that means that system is consistent no matter what the right-hand side is. That only happens when you have a pivot position in every row. In rows means in pivot positions. Columns of A span RN. Okay, that again means that uh, there's a pivot position in every row. So that no matter what you put on the right side, uh, the system will be consistent. So again, pivot position every row, so n pivot positions. And number nine, uh, x to ax is on to rn. So that means again, there's a solution no matter what the right hand side uh, of the system ax equals b is. So there has to be a pivot position in every row. And then last, uh, A transpose is invertible. Uh, it's kind of a tag along there, but if A is invertible, A transpose is invertible. Okay, um, so I've, I've uh, taken a few of the even numbered problems from this section just to kind of talk through those to give you uh, an idea about how to, to go through some of the logic here. So here's one. Is it possible for a 5 by 5 matrix to be invertible when its columns do not span R5? Okay, well, let's see. If the columns don't span R5, then that means that there's not a pivot position in every row. 
and that means that the matrix is not row equivalent to the identity matrix, or you could say that uh, there's less than five pivot positions. Uh, either one of those gets you to um, the matrix. It cannot be um, in invertible. All right, here's one. Get a six by six matrix. In the equation, CX equals V is consistent for every V in R6. Is it possible that for some V, the equation CX equals V has more than one solution? Okay, well, if CX equals V is consistent for every V in R6, then that means that there must be a pivot position in every row. And since this is a square matrix, if there's a pivot position in every row, then there's also one in every column. And if there's a pivot position in every column, that means there's no free variables. And so hence, any system will, uh, uh, or there will be no system that has um, an infinite number of solutions, only a unique solution. All right. Let's suppose H is n by n, and the equation HX equals C is inconsistent for some C. Does the system HX equals zero have non-trivial solutions? Hmm. Well, if HX equals C is inconsistent for some right-hand side, then there can't be a pivot position in every row. And that means that there can't be a pivot position in every column, since H is a square matrix. And if there's not a pivot position in every column, then that means you have free variables, and hence there are non-trivial solutions to HX equals zero. Okay, another one. If L is N by N, and LX equals zero has only the trivial solution, do the columns of L span RN? Well, if LX equals zero has only the trivial solution, then that means there's no free variables. So we have a pivot position in every column of L, which means we have a pivot position in every row of L, since L is square. And if there's a pivot position in every row, then that means that the columns span R in. All right, let's move on to talk about uh, invertible linear transformations. Um, Let's suppose we have a, a linear transformation T from Rn to Rn uh, that's defined by the matrix A. So A here would be N by N. All right, for any X, uh, we can compute AX, right? For any X, we can compute T of X or A times X. Um, let's think about going backwards, though. Suppose you have some B and you would like to know um, is there a unique vector x such that ax equals b? Okay, so, so think of b as being in the codomain, and we want to go backwards to see what x mapped to that b. All right, well, this works if t is both 1 to 1 and on to. Okay, so for us to be able to go backwards and find out what x mapped to b, we can do that if we know that t is 1 to 1 and on to. Okay, so why is that? Well, if t is on to, then that means that every b in Rn um, is mapped to by at least 1x. Right? Every b is mapped to by at least 1x. So that means that if we go backward, there's an x to go back to. Um, if it's 1 to 1, then that means that every b is mapped to by at most 1x. Right? Every b is mapped to by at most 1x. So that means that if we can go backwards, there's only one vector to go backwards to. Right? We don't have multiple vectors mapping to the same b. So if you put those two things together, T is 1 to 1 and on to, then every B is mapped to by exactly 1X, okay, which means there's a unique solution. So how do we find that X? Given a particular vector B, how do we find out what X mapped to it? Well, we need to solve AX equals B, 
And the way to do that, uh, if we know that A is invertible, is um, to uh, simply multiply A inverse times B. So the matrix that defines the inverse transformation T inverse is simply A inverse. Okay, so, so A takes you um, forward, right? From X, you multiply uh, A times X to get B in the codomain. To go backwards, to reverse that, um, you multiply uh, by A inverse. So T is defined by A. T inverse is defined by A inverse. Another way to look at it is this. Um, under what conditions does there exist a unique vector x such that ax equals b for every b in Rn? All right. When can we know that the system ax equals b is always consistent and always has a unique solution? Well, it's consistent uh, if there's a pivot position in every row of A, right? AX equals B is consistent for every B if there's a pivot position in every row of A. And if the solution is unique, then there has to be no free variables. So that means there has to be a pivot position in every column of A. So backing up, it's consistent. Uh, if it's consistent for every B, we have to have a pivot position in every row. If there's a unique solution, um, then that means we have no free variables, so we have to have a pivot position in every column. Okay, so t of x equals ax is invertible when a has a pivot position in every row and column, i.e. when a has n pivot positions, i.e. when a is invertible.